Hi YouTube, my name is Johan. Uh, the plan today is to make a fly cutter for cutting gears. So let me move the camera and show you what I've got in mind. So here I've got two pieces of bright mild steel. This one is uh, 35 millimeters thick and I don't know about 25 long. This one is 18 millimeters thick. This is actually ER8 steel, it's not bright mild. And it's about 45 millimeters long. So the plan is to turn them on the lathe, join them together, cut a slot in there right on the middle to hold the cutter, make set some, uh, drill some holes and tap them and put some set screws in and then be able to hold the cutter. So I'm going to move over to the lathe and then I'll show you what the plan is. So the first step is to put the thick piece in the lathe and um, start facing it on this end. I'm going to face it, drill a hole, and then put the other one inside of that, weld them together, and then I'll turn this one around, then I'll skim the sides, and I'll face this side before I start milling it. So my lathe is a belt drive, and it was set to about 1,600 revs, which I think is too high. So off camera I just went and quickly switched it to about 630 RPMs I think. I always put some rags here just to keep most of the chips off the ways. So I'm going to take this piece of bright mild, put it in the chuck. Start by facing this end. Um, in this quick change tool post it's already set to center height I'm just going to bring it in closer uh, what I'll do is I'll put some cutting oil on there touch it, bring it out take off about 0 .0 of a, uh, 0.1 of a millimeter face it, see where we go Not too bad, still need a little bit off there, so I'll come back, touch off again, see if we can clean it up this time. I'm also going to be locking the, the feed this way, um, just to make sure it doesn't move on me as I'm facing the, the material. <coughs> Cleaned up all the way, finish is not too bad, probably do a bit better, but I'm not too worried about finish for now. Okay, so I've gone and I've faced the second side as well off camera, just want to put a small chamfer on the end there. This bit, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's slanted to the one side at an angle, so it's difficult to have it set at center height, because depending on where you cut, center height is different. So I'm just going to eyeball it in terms of putting it on center for the piece that I want to use and then just going to do a slight break the edge there. That's good enough. Now I'm going to set up to center drill this and I'll show you guys what the plan is there. Let, let me tell you, what I want to do is I want to put a 12mm 
blind hole in there, it's not too deep, about five millimeter or so deep should be good enough with uh, preferably a, a flat bottom hole so a, a normal drill is obviously not going to do the trick so what I'll do is I'll center drill then I'll take it up to about 11.5 millimeters or I think I've got an 11.8 millimeter drill bit after that I'll take a 12 millimeter end mill put it in the, in the chuck and just bore out the whole flat bottom 12 millimeter accurate hole and then I'll take the other piece and I'm going to turn a, a short piece of the other shaft to 12 millimeters for a tight fit in there so I can press fit it and then I'm just going to uh, dig weld it all around so the press fit the idea is that that'll um, center it for me it'll put the two pieces together nicely so that I can easily weld them okay so I'll set up the tail stock with a chuck in, small center drill. I'm going to start by center drilling that piece that I faced off. Now, John from the Double Boost channel always says that uh, a center drill's biggest ambition in life is to break off of the hole. Now, luckily, I've never had that happen to me before, so let's hope it's not going to happen today. <laughs> Next I'm going to drill about 5mm in using a 3mm drill, then a 7 and then I've found an 11.5 and then um, once that, that hole is drilled to 11.5, I'll bring you guys back on the camera and show you how, uh, what the plan is to do with the end mill. So a bit of a change of plan, I decided to just go straight in with the 11.5mm drill rather than have to step it up from 3 to 7 to 11.5 the reason being that it's going to be a really shallow hole and that the um, center drill has already started which is more or less about a 3 millimeter hole for me so there's not much work left for the 11.5 so let's see what happens if I try and do that I think the speed is a bit too fast for this drill so let me see what happens first and I may actually switch off the camera and just change the belt again <coughs> yeah, that's too fast so off camera I'm just going to change the speed of the blade okay so off camera I went and I just slowed down the lathe I'm down to its slowest speed which on the belt here is 160 rpms it's probably a bit too slow for this as well as for the end mill that I'm going to use after this but I have found that it's better to go s too slow than too fast so let's see how that, this goes <coughs> So I'm going to stop there because the end mill is going to go in a bit deeper than that as well. So that was basically drilling an 11.5 millimeter drill into mild steel at a very slow speed without basically any pilot hole, which is probably not ideal, but given what I was trying to do here, I thought I'd take that chance. So next up I'm going to swap this Jacobs chuck for an end collet, a, a milling bit collet. Goes into the same taper back here on the tailstock. And then we'll see what happens if I try and clean that all up with the 12mm end mill. The third bit was easy because it was just 
taking the hole up to the full 12 mm diameter. Yeah, I can see that it's starting to bottom out now. But it seems to be going in without too much trouble. Back out. Just not looking too bad. Clean off this chips. Going about another millimeter or two maybe. up a bit of movement and I can see that there was a bit of chatter you can see it in the finish in the hole so, um, most likely due to the fact that I was going too slow for the mole but we'll see um, all I need that hole for is just to press fit the rest of the shaft before I actually weld it so off camera I'm going to remove all of this take this out and bring in the, the rest of the shaft that I'm going to turn down to fit into that hole in. and uh, just measuring it with the calipers it's showing quite a bit more than 12 millimeters about 12.44 which I can work with as long as it's accurate then I'll just turn the rest of the shaft so that it's a, a tight press fit into that a more accurate way of measuring an inside hole I found is to use an inside micrometer This is also showing yeah, about the same, 12.42. Okay, I set the lathe speed back up to about a thousand RPMs on the belt. I'm going to take this piece of EN8 stock, face it on the one side. The idea is to turn it down to 16 millimeters for about uh, more or less an inch, 20, 20, 25 millimeters. That bit will go into an ER25 collar chuck, 16 mil chuck. The rest of this I'll just um, touch and, and clean up. The diameter doesn't really matter. But then um, for the last 5 millimeters or so on there, maybe 4 millimeters, I'm going to turn it down so that it's a press fit into this little sucker that I made earlier on. And then press it in there, just um, take the TIG welder and weld it all the way around. And then I'll turn it around in the chuck and clean this up. Face it again just to make sure it's square to the to the shaft before I start milling the groove to take the, the cutter bits. never worked with EN8 before it seems to actually be giving quite a nice finish so now the next question is I need to turn down a piece of that shaft it's 18 mils currently so it says let me quickly check that yeah just shy of 18 mils I need to take a piece of that down to 16 Uh, these dimensions are really not critical um, probably up to there gives me more than enough to put in the in the ER25 collar chuck in that last little piece there you turn down to fit press fit into that hole and then this piece left basically at 18 millimeters um, just gives me a bit of meat to run a well bead around that. Now I'm thinking whether I should center drill this and put a live center in there when turning it down since I can probably chuck it up to there and turn up to there it should give me enough body to hang on to in the collar chuck since that dimension is not all that critical it just needs to be a little bit less than 16 so it will fit into the chuck 
the chuck will crimp down anyway and, and grab it. I uh, think I'm probably going to be able to get away with chucking it up on this end and then turning that down. Let's, let's give it a try first and see how it goes. And I should probably center drill it. I'm lazy. Take small cuts. Good work. Let's see. I'm going to touch off and zero my dial, bring it back out, go in about, I'm going to start with uh, 2.25 millimeters, I think it's about 10 thou, let's see how that goes. <coughs> Zero the dial, come back out, go in 0.25 millimeters. See how that goes. finish isn't great um, the insert on this cutter is pretty new so I don't think it's that I don't know what ENA turns like, like normally like I said this is the first time I've used it probably part of that is maybe due to a bit of flexing because I'm sticking out I think a little bit further than what I should be I think the norm is that you shouldn't be sticking out more than twice or two and a half times the thickness so this is 18 and I'm sticking out 32 so I'm just about on the limits of, I think of what's theoretically allowable but um, I'll touch this up with a file and it's again the finish is, is not too critical this is going to be held in a collet chuck so I would like it to be fairly smooth as a last cut I'll also take a very thin cut and that will probably help the finish so I'm just going to go get an outside mic so I can mic this. I've zeroed my dial for this cut so I know how much is left to go. Okay, I brought this down to just less than 16 millimeters. Took a really light cut in the end. The finish is still not great so I'm just going to touch it with the file and see if it helps. <coughs> Now these ER25 collets, they run in ranges of 1mm, so for example this one is very small there, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but it says 16 and it clamps down to 15. I've tried 16mm silver steel or drill rod as it's called in the US in here before. It goes in but it's a, it's a bit of a tight fit, so I prefer when making little shanks for these things to make them you know let's mic it quickly probably about 15.8 oh it's about 15.8584 so I take off about 0 0.1 0 0.15 millimeter less than the maximum of a collet to make sure and it goes over quite easily a bit of a loose fit But, if I put it in the chuck and tighten it up, it should easily be able to bite. So that's going to work well.
and then I'm just going to mic this I've zeroed my dial on that cut so I know what I'm working with so that's 16.87 give or take so I'm going to try and take off 0.87 just to get to a, a whole number and then I'll work it down from there actually more spring cuts than really taking away any, any material I'm now down to sure I think I took it a little bit too far 12.43 more or less so hopefully it's not too much actually it is but nevertheless it's it's still a very slight very very tight slide fit so what I'll do is I'll um, slide it on there keep it clamped maybe in the vise tag it up and then weld it all the way around okay so I'm gonna take this out I'll go go over to the vise see if it actually will do with a, a little bit of a press fit and then get it prepped to weld then I'm going to put this in the vise between the jaws and just press fit that last bit maybe even tap it with a brass hammer put it down on an anvil and tap it with a brass hammer and um, I believe that's going to be good enough for just holding in, it in place while I'm welding I'll give it two quick tacks on maybe or three at 120 degrees apart and then I should be able to run it around so I'm not really set up at the table where I'm going to be doing the welding to show you guys but uh, you know nothing to it just gonna run a very small TIG weld around the edge there I'm not a welding expert either so um, I think it's maybe more of a case I don't want you seeing um, the way I do the welding but we'll see what it looks like afterwards I went over to the vise and pressed these two pieces together the last half a millimeter or so actually went in fairly tight so I think I, I eventually got what I wanted the idea behind that press fit was, was literally just to keep it in place while I'm doing the welding and so that it doesn't pull to one side I could have probably put it in the vise and tagged it up and even without a press fit would have done the job but nevertheless, so the welding is nothing to write home about, just a very basic TIG weld. I don't weld that often and with TIG welding it's quite a, quite a tricky thing to do, you have to practice. Typically when you do a job then the last weld is always the best looking one because of the practice you got throughout the job. So if you guys want to see some very good welding, I suggest you go look at Jody's welding tips and tricks .com. I think he's the master in that area. Also uh, Keith Fenner and um, Ox Toolco, Tom Lipton from Ox Toolco. All of those guys have held a welding torch in their hands more than once before. Okay, but like I said, I believe this will hold the two pieces together and that, that's what I wanted. So I'm going to leave this to cool on its own, not that I think any of these two steels can really be treated via heat to harden them, but I don't want to take the chance and also avoid it warping or pulling to the one side, so I'm going to leave it outside, let it, let it cool on its own. Once it's cooled down to the touch, I'll bring it back, I want to mount it in the chuck, I need to clean it up on the outside, I'm going to reface that side anyway. But I want to mount it up in the chuck and just put an indicator next to it and uh, just for interest sake see how much run out I've got now well that cutter head is cooling down it's gonna probably take half an hour or so and like I said I don't want to cool it under any water or cool it down quickly I thought I'd give you guys a bit of background so my name is Johan as I said in the beginning I actually work in the IT trade, so I work with computers and software all day long. So all this stuff is literally just a hobby. I have no formal training in any of this. So everything I know I learned through reading books and, and in recent years looking at things online. And I want to 
plug a few guys that that I've learned a lot from just by watching what they've done hoping that if anybody watches this I can point you guys to those guys channels and, and you can also pick up what I've learned from them so the first guy is uh, Keith Fenner he owns a business called Turnright Machine Works I believe it's in the New England area in, in the States and a uh, brilliant guy in, in terms of the, the precision of his work and stuff is just incredible He'll do a big job and still work down to half a thou on a on something this huge. So in, incredible work. I learned a lot from him. Then also um, uh, the 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 ox man, Tom Lipton from Ox Tool Co. Incredible what that guy can do with tools and and the way he thinks about things. So really go so and and watch his channel. Then uh, Mr. Pete Tubal Kane. He's also known as Tubal Kane. Learned lots of stuff from him. Um, Myfer, Myfer guy I think he's called he does quite a bit of casting learned a lot from that guy I ran out of battery there while talking about some of the guys channels I'm watching and, and where I learn all this stuff from so I think I probably got down to Tom Lipton from Ox Tool Co and, and maybe Mr. Pete and Myfer boy and I'll put some links to those guys channels down here in the description but maybe some other mentions is also I, I recently discovered a bomb 79 I think Adam also um, really brilliant the stuff he's doing and, and showing willing to show then from a welding point of view of course is welding tips and tricks from Jody side uh, best welder that I've ever seen on the internet really worth watching if you're interested in, in anything to do with welding there's some other channels that I can't remember now, but also some really good guys out there that's willing to share quite a lot of information. I will um, put the links in the description of this video and it's really worth checking out those guys. So while I ran out of battery and I went back and put a bit of charge in the battery, I don't think it's going to last too long because I was only out for about half an hour, quickly jumped in the pool. If you're wondering as to why I'm jumping in the pool, I live in South Africa. In the capital Pretoria and the last three days have been around about 38 degrees maximum so it's it's really hot for you imperial guys I think it's about 100 degrees Fahrenheit with quite a bit of humidity so it's really hot and whenever I take a break I go jump in the pool I've seen from some of the other channels that I watch that people keep asking more or less the same questions you know uh, what does your workshop look like what machines have you got so um, expecting the same kind of questions from those of you that watch this channel I'll just quickly take the camera and, and show you around I think the, the first thing worth showing is just the camera mount it's a no-go style knockoff holder for a dial gauge um, and then I just made a little adapter that plugs into where the dial would usually go and I'm using a GoPro camera and um, just the tripod attachment for the GoPro camera and with a little attachment that goes in there then as, as far as my shop goes like I said I'm, I'm really just a hobbyist I've got a fairly small area about the size of a single car garage maybe a little bit bigger the reason for that is that like I said this is not my trade it's literally just a hobby so I never thought now I do this much so as you can see I'm running out of space luckily I've got lots of space outside so and it's covered and shaded so whenever I need to do any woodworking stuff I just take the stuff outside the one thing that's difficult to move is the lathe it's a cheap I think Taiwanese lathe but it's served me well over the years although I just do hobbyist stuff on it don't work on it every day it's got a milling head attachment if you can call it that um, at least it can mill and then just you know nothing fancy so I'm actually more into woodworking and um, started doing woodworking many years ago enjoy that a lot and only in the last few years start playing around with the metalworking stuff yeah I've welded in the past built security gates and fences and I can weld I can do the basics but the, the fine machinery work is a only started that in the last few years okay so I think just uh, that bit of background take you back to the lathe 
and let's see what the run out is on that cutter head that I made. Now, not not that this matters because I'm going to be machining, remachining this face and, and facing this part of the cutter again. So I chucked it up, but it'd still be interesting to see what the run out is on this after the process that I went through and, and especially after the welding I want to see how accurate it came out. Now I've got a cheap knockoff um, quick change tool post and I made some additional holders for myself and one of the things I made a while back was also just a, a little holder that I can clamp in there that actually takes a dial gauge. Nothing fancy but it allows me to put my dial gauge in the in the quick change tool post so you guys are probably not going to be able to see anything on the dial gauge itself so you're just going to have to take my word for it it's lined it up more or less center and then bring in the cross slide until I'm zeroed out so that's zero and then just turning it around I'm getting so this is an imperial gauge and, and one one line is 0 0.01 millimeter so that's I believe 10 microns so I'm getting three lines so that's 30 microns that's back to two back to one zero and maybe like half a line the other way back to three and I think that's a full revolution so run out wise I'm getting looks like about 0 0.03 millimeter which in Imperial I believe is the smidge over 1000 so that that's not too bad but like I said I'm going to be remachining this anyway. maybe show you what that's going to look like um, I'm going to mill a slot of which the one side will run right through the center and then offset to the one side by just a, a little bit over six millimeters reason for that being is that most of my cutters that go in here will be six millimeters then I'm also going to take off a little bit here and drill two set screw holes in there with um, taking out this bit two holes there with the set screws going through there and keeping the cutter in place so that's the plan and depth wise I'm also going to go just a little bit over six millimeters uh, no reason to go too deep and my mill is really small so it's already going to be I believe a challenge to do this so I don't want to do more than I have to before the milling work can start, uh, the, the most important bit is of course to get your setup right, uh, get a solid setup that will work for what you're trying to do. Now as you can see, I've, it's a really small lathe, my took off the chuck, just to give me a bit more space here, and then my vise is really small, I think it's a 75mm jaw width, so it's only about 3 inches jaw width. And, um, you know, to, to clamp this thing with a V-block in there just wasn't enough space. Now, I've got this El Cheapo clamp kit that comes with a bunch of studs and T-nuts and nuts and what have you. And um, I think I came up with a way using these two V-blocks and the clamping kit. So basically what I'm going to do is use the two T-nuts and studs here put two V-blocks on top of each other like this clamp them down ok, something like that and then bring in the cutter and clamp it with a G-clamp in the V-block and then find the center and then mill back and forth this way so, or, or maybe even I think a better option is to mill back and forth this way. So, fine. 
I'll, I'll be the first to admit that this is not a perfect setup, but I um, had to work with what I've got, and this is what I ended up with. So these two V-blocks on top of each other clamped down with T-nuts to the base where the tool post usually goes. Then some two similar V-blocks on the other side. And then a, a G clamp that basically you know pulls it from that side, and they really tight, tightly pulled down to the table. So I think that's a good thing. Um, I'm going to go be going six millimeters into this thing when slotting it, and it's standing sticking out about ten millimeters. So I've left more than enough, and there's also I think more than enough. There's about almost an inch, 20, 25 millimeters into the V blocks. The way I'm going to be finding center line is using a, a little wiggler center, center finder here. There's lots of videos on the internet on how to do that. I think, um, let me just bring the camera around and show you something else. So my lathe doesn't have a DRO, it's got dials and it's, it's fairly accurate, but for this kind of thing, I've got a little Jippo set up here with magnets that just clamps a digital caliper and I'm going to be using that so you can see if I'm moving the cross slide you can see the, the readings change as well so that's like a, a uh, El Cheapo DRO I think um, and I'm going to be using that to find the center